Thank you. Thank you. I like how you roll. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so excited. We have just been chit chatting offline. I almost forget to hit, forgot to hit record because I feel like I have my soul sister here, Angie from Fickle Chickle, and our soul sister here. I've got Jessica, who is another Southern eccentric lady of the South. How are you today, Jessica? Oh gosh, Bryce, I'm so good. It's so nice to meet you. It Thank is. Thank you for having me. Of course, before we get going, guys, I'm going to put all of Jessica's link down in the description box below, but I want to go ahead and share your channel, you guys. She is the Cryptid Huntress, and I kid you not, if you look through her video library, we have covered almost all of the same stuff. It's wild. And so I have enjoyed going back and looking through her videos and just seeing, it's it's one of those things, Jessica, where you're like, okay, I'm not crazy. Like other people are seeing this too. You know, oh, right? <laughs> That's always a good thing. It's, it's a good thing to know there's other weird weirdos out there like yourself, right? <laughs> Absolutely. The, you know, uh, what we were laughing offline about how many people have called us witches. And you know, the etymology of the word witch is a wise woman. Oh, yeah. I'm very wise. I'm very wise. I've made a, I made a lot of silly, uh, I've had a lot of experiences, I guess, and experience and made a lot of bad decisions, which made me very wise. Oh, absolutely. Brain. That's the best way to learn, right? <laughs> Right. Well, Absolutely. Not, not only is Jessica obviously Southern, you can tell by her pretty, pretty proper Southern accent, but we, we grew up around the same area. And I was telling you Jessica offline, which I have so many incredible viewers from all over the world. It's amazing how many little weirdos are all over the world that are super interested in the same things we are. And down, I was saying, you know, down here in the deep South, this is one of the most magical places I believe exists is the deep South, the Southeastern part of the United States. And um, I was telling you, Jessica, I tell my my subscribers that those are, who aren't from the South, if you're from the South, you know what I'm saying. But if you're not from the South, there are kind of two groups of people. You got the real fundamentalist Christians, and then you've got the eccentrics. And I think, Jessica, you and I definitely fall into the eccentric category. And I say that, de that they're both going to be at church on Sunday, but the eccentrics are also going to be telling ghost stories, learning tarot cards, doing a little magic, you know, and that's the fun part of the South, isn't it? Is that folklore, that legendary, all that stuff. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I grew up on legends and lore of my, my the area that I grew up in. And uh, I, I live in Northwest Georgia. And uh, my, I come from a family who told ghost stories growing up all the time. And we have generational stories, like passed down generation to generation of things like um, ghosts in, the in people's houses and uh, like a fireball that came out of the woods. Uh, and I think this was in the Rome area, actually, uh, a fireball that came out of the woods uh, when my great, great, great grandmother was passing away and it circled the house and it went inside the house and just weird stuff. I mean, my great grandmother and my great aunt even have a potential um, ab like alien abduction story from up in Rome, Georgia, from the I 1980s. Believe yeah, I, believe it. I was telling Jessica offline that, you know, I don't have any ancestral lineage to Rome. Uh, my family moved there because of jobs, basically. And so I grew I grew up there. And it's like an hour outside of Atlanta. So we were in Atlanta a lot. But um, the, Rome is, it, it's an interesting place. And I, I hope, Jessica, I covered a little bit. I, I sent you the, the legend of the clock tower. I think I taught, we were talking about the legend of the clock tower, all that kind of stuff. There's just some wild stories around that, that area of the world. And I can't wait to dive deeper because I think as most of you guys watch, you know, there are, there's more to our world than meets the eye. We're also at the base of Appalachia, which is the oldest mountain chain in the world. And we were laughing off camera about moonshine and you got a lot of moonshiners. <laughs> <laughs> you never been oh, yeah. to a real party until you've been to the party where there's a moonshine. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and I can't say we don't have moonshine around the campfire out in the woods every now and then. It's fun. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. it's what happens in the woods stays in the woods. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jessica, give the audience a little bit of, of background about your life. I know you've been, um, you, like me, you kind of grew up with this mystical, like a lot of Southern kids, with these stories. Um, I, I always laugh and say, my mama told me my first ghost go story about the gray man of South Carolina. Scared the shit out of me when I was like four years old. But, you know, that's just part. It's like it's like a rite of passage, right? You just hear these stories. So so what did your life look like and what led you? Because you do like a lot of remote viewing and stuff like that. Am I correct in saying that? 
I am I am extensively trained in remote viewing. Yes. And uh, but I'm also a Bigfoot field researcher. And so that's that's my number one thing that I like to do uh, on the weekends. But I'm, I learned remote viewing through my Bigfoot field research group, though. OK, oh, wow. which is interesting. So, yeah, it's, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. uh, and so but yeah, when I was a kid, I mean, I grew up loving ghost stories and stuff. I mean, I was seeing ghosts when I was a kid and that's kind of how it all got started uh, was just the ghost aspect. And not to mention, I was obsessed with like UFOs when I was a kid <clears throat> and, uh, and I grew up on a farm. And so we would, or I would take my little, my little nap mat, the mat that I would take a nap on in kindergarten. And I would take it out to the front yard. I grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, and so the sky was just open and beautiful and bright. And I would watch for UFOs at night. Um, out there by myself. And I was, okay, so you talked about Mahaley Lancaster. You and I were talking about her earlier. And uh, and this fortune teller oracle has followed me around my entire life, okay? Um, because when I was in, and this is really the base, like this is how I got started and, and, and kind of, I'm not going to say catapulted me into what I do today, um, but is how it got started. And uh, when I was in, I guess, around first grade, second grade, my grandmother, she was very familiar with Mahaley Lancaster and, and loved her story. She was actually writing a book about Mahaley. And, uh, and she was in the middle of writing this book and she got a phone call from a, a woman from Florida. And she said, uh, is this, is this Nellie? And she, my, my grandmother said, yeah. She said, well, you don't know me, but Mahaley, Mahaley asked me to call you. She said uh, that she was uh, happy that you were doing a book, uh, that you were going, you were doing, writing a book and putting her story out there. And my grandmother said, well, how did you get my name and my phone number? She said, well, Mahaley told me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, well, okay. So that, that happened. Well, my grandmother had all this information on Mahaley and was writing the book. Well, she, she actually put it away because she got, she got scared and uh, it kind of frightened her a little bit, but it didn't stop her from writing stories. And uh, she wrote a story for me about Mahaley Lancaster. It was called Mac and Miss Mahaley. And, uh, and she gave me that story and I memorized it. And I read that um, and I, I, I learned it and I entered a storytelling contest. And I won that storytelling contest. And uh, for the entire county that I lived in, my school and the county. Uh, and for my prize, they gave me uh, some Encyclopedia Britannicas that were all about space, outer space and all the planets. Um, and so... It's, it's so weird how it's all connected now. And I look back at that and uh, I'm really uh, very much like I've, I've been visited by ETs. I've had cont contact uh, out in the field with not only Sasquatch, but, but cl up close contact with extraterrestrials. <clears throat> and it all kind of, I, I was getting prepared for it as a young kid. And, uh, and if I had not read that story about Mahaley, or not read, but told that story about Mahaley, I might not have been so much into it because I wouldn't have gotten those encyclopedias. It you know, all, isn't so, it so fascinating to look back at your life and see how the dots have connected in Eastern philosophy, that's your Dharma. And sometimes you, which is like your truthful living, like what you came, it's like, it's like a non-negotiable, like where all paths lead to this one thing that you are here to do or the lessons you're here to learn or whatever your soul came here to do. And um, yeah, Mahaley, we, we talked about Mahaley. She's to me, and I said on my episode, I feel like every woman, especially in the South, has a little bit of Mahaley Lancaster in her. And the cool thing about Mahaley, not only was she like this big oracle, but she was like the first lawyer in, a female lawyer in the state of Georgia. She was the first, I mean, she did a lot. She was a very well accomplished woman in a time when was, she was born in the 1800s, correct? Like in a time, yes. she died in like the 1950s, like in a time where it was not the easiest for one for a woman to be that independent in that and have her own voice. Um, it kind of have you ever covered the werewolf of Georgia? Uh, I've I, we have werewolf in the county where I live. Okay, we have werewolves oh. all over. So <laughs> yeah. Well, there, okay, I want to. Yes, and we we can talk about that too. Um, absolutely. I wanted I wanted to tell you a little some another little tidbit, and I don't know if this pertains really to Mahaley, but something that a lot of people don't know about me is that I was the executive director of the Georgia Commission on Women for almost twenty years. Okay, uh, for like fi fifteen to twenty years, I can't remember the exact number, but uh, it was back when I was in my former life. <laughs> Um, and I, li I lived in downtown Atlanta for 20 years. Okay. So oh, now wow. I was there for every, yeah, I worked there for the entire time I was in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, and so I was working for women's rights and, uh, and doing similar stuff kind of, I'm not going to say like Mahaley, but it, she was an inspiration for sure. So, I mean, um, 
Well, and I say that too, because I, you know, I, my, my viewers might know this or might not, but you know, even though I live in Atlanta and like, this, this is my home, I spent, you know, my mom's family is from the coast of South Carolina. My grand, my dad's from Tennessee, dad's dad's from Tennessee. My dad's mom is from South Georgia. So um, I, most of my growing up, I learned more about like South Carolina history and the Gullah culture and, you know, and I'm just now really reacquainting myself to a lot of the Georgia stuff because I grew up around here and I had weird stuff happen. But I learned when I was researching uh, originally uh, Emily Isabella Burt, who from Talbot County, who has this huge legend around her as being a werewolf. She was a werewolf in the 1800s. She died in the early 1900s. And her grave, like they have to mark off her grave because people still go to her grave because the legend is still alive and well that she was this werewolf. Well, when doing that research, I learned that Georgia was one of the first states to allow women the right to inherit. Wow. So George has been like a leader for for women. And I learned that because of this woman inheriting before, in a lot of other states at this time in a lot of other countries in the, you know, the, the, the 19th century, early 20th century, in order for a woman to inherit, she had to inherit through her husband, the, the money yeah. family went to go to the husband and then to her. But Georgia was really one of the first to say, no, 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 you know, we're going to let these women inherit from their parents without a husband married or no married it's their money um and i just thought that was kind of cool for i mean i think people a lot of times jessica look at us from the south and think we're all backwoods you know and right. you know but that no there's a lot of like really you know strong leading especially females you know oh yeah for sure. Okay, so you you mentioned I have not heard of that werewolf story before. Uh, so it's this is brand new for me. What it, the they heck? say she they say she's still I've I've covered her a, mo a couple of times. Like I originally covered her when I first opened my channel, and then I brought my friend Angie on, and we talked about it. Cause she's so I feel like when you're from the South, you have a very a different type of like understanding. And I remember one of the stories. Um, her family owned a farm in Talbot County, which is close to uh, actually kind of close to where you know, kind of it's a little south of where Mahaley lived. It's closer to like Quitman, I, I think, more South Georgia. But they talked about how she would get lost at night, and she would be you know go roam in the cow pastures at night, and they she couldn't remember. And you know, people would say, "Oh, she was probably sleepwalking." I'm like, "Well, you know, if you think about the South, especially in the summertime, being outside is it's hot." It's muggy. South mm -hmm. Georgia is very natty. There's lots of gnats. Nats. I was going to yeah. say gnats. We yeah. got gnats. Yeah. You're not, if you're sleepwalking or you're just out walking around or roaming, you're going it, to, it's not like it's a beautiful, pristine fairy tale. I mean, it's beautiful, but there's a lot of nature that's going to wake you up. That's going to, and so that was one thing I said, like, as from the South, I can, I can say definitively for myself, like, that's not a possibility when she disappeared at night that she was just sleepwalking in the pastures or just out roaming, you know, especially with cow shit everywhere, you know, like, and this is yeah. the like, 1800s, like, you know, it's, it's. It's not, it's not accommodating to a woman in a huge dress to, you That's know, right. it, it's just, I remember that equipment. And when I go there, when, my few memories of equipment, when my great grandfather was alive, like just getting the gnats in the eyes and just the heat is just insufferable sometimes. So, you oh, know. Yeah. Um, that's how we drink cold sweet tea down here. <laughs> I know. Oh, no. I went to school. I went to uh, Georgia Southern University. Okay. And so I know the Nat line. I know all yeah. about that. Uh, yeah. I played sports down there. It was it was miserable during the summertime. Miserable. And so yeah. when you know miserable. that, when you know that flavor of personality, you can kind of see through some of people's assumptions when they obviously are not familiar with the terrain. Now, that area is interesting, too, close to where you are, because it's almost like a portal, isn't it? That area. Well, some say there's a portal out here. There's portals everywhere, I believe. And, uh, and you know, and, uh, and to go back down a little bit to that uh, Talbot area or, you know, even, I want to say like Heard County. That's where Mahaley Lancaster was from. And that's the Troop Heard Corridor. And I'm sure you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was there this weekend, this past weekend. Uh, all three of my, my Bigfoot field research teams all got together. And we had a huge expedition out there uh, at an undisclosed location. But it was at the Troop Heard Corridor. Right there near Heard County. It might have been in Heard. I don't even know where I was, to be honest. It was in the middle of nowhere. Um, but uh, but I roamed the woods all night. I was out there stalking cryptids. There were Bigfoots everywhere. Uh, we had we had a lot of Bigfoot activity this weekend. Um, but there's that is an area of super duper high strangeness, and I don't know exactly what's going on there. Um, but they have uh, alien abductions, <laughs> like a big number of alien abductions, aliens 
abducting people with military involved uh, from some of the reports. Uh, Sasquatch, dogmen, werewolves. Um, they even found that little Sumerian tablet in the, somebody's garden down there, right? The, the Hearn tablet. So it actually, I don't know what's going on. Have you heard? So I saw that you, you, I was looking through your channel. You've talked about Tartaria before, haven't you? Oh, I talk about giants all the time. I'm talking about giants to, uh, on my, my next show, actually. Um, so Girl. yeah, I talk about giants. I mean, modern day sightings of giants. Oh, too. yes. Yeah. So I, I actually, so do you know where the Etowah Indian mounds are in Cartersville? Oh my God. I was just there. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. We have dogman reports around that area uh, at, at a place that's uh, around the High Shoals area, which is about 10 minutes from there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's good to have contacts at the sheriff's departments around yeah. here. And uh, and so they give me um, updates on when people call in and say they've hit a werewolf on the highway. Things you know, like that's that. what's interesting about police down here in the South, anywhere in the South. I cannot tell <laughs> you how many stories. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I know friends who say the police will call in all sorts of like witch doctors and to come into their precinct to help them because down here in the South, they get so you cannot be a police officer in the South and not have run ins with the paranormal because it is yes. so prevalent. And I know so many people who've said like haunted, notoriously haunted houses Police get called out there all the time when no one's home, but they see people inside. The police are like, ma'am, this is a haunted house. <laughs> Someone's in there, but they're not of this world. It's fine. Just, uh, you know, and I know we're in Charleston. I don't know how it is in small towns in Georgia, but in Charleston, South Carolina, where my mom's family's from, the realtors there cannot even sell a house unless they disclose to the potential buyers if it's haunted or not. They have to buy what? them all, disclose <laughs> if the house has hauntings, um, which that's I was, awesome. Yeah. And I, you know, down here in the South, that's like, Oh yeah, why wouldn't they? But uh, you know, you think of like people come from the North as we call them Yankees come from the North and having a real yeah, right. thing. So you got like a little girl that lives here and you got an old lady that lives here and you know, like have, you know, I wonder how like weird that would seem to them, but they law by law have to disclose that um, because I guess it's a problem when people buy property or an old house and it's haunted and they get upset because nobody told them i guess it's like buying a house where a, gr a grisly murder happened and you know one tells you that that happened on that property you know they have to just yeah. that stuff but it's wild you know it's so bigfoot is huge i know bigfoot is is cited in a lot of places but bigfoot is big down here in the south there's a lot of oh, yeah stuff. Correct. Every car, every car has a Bigfoot sticker on the back, doesn't it? I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have. <laughs> There's like five different museums. If you go down certain freeways, you'll see you'll see a sign for a particular museum of evidence of Bigfoot. And I really yeah. believe, well, with the Tartaria stuff too. I, when you said the Sumerian text, there is a theory, and it's a theory that I have very much entertained that the geography that they've told us in history is not correct. And that I agree with that 100%. Everything's really? everything's wrong. It's all yeah. wrong. It's they're all they they the controllers are hiding stuff mm -hmm. th that this where we live is actually Egypt, the real Egypt. Oh god, I just got goosebumps. Absolutely. I mean, I like I wear Isis on my necklace every day. I have a very Don't tell me you have one too. Oh on. gosh, I knew it. <laughs> We're star sisters. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it's there is so in the, the mighty Mississippi River where Huck Finn yeah. went with Jim up mighty Mississippi. That would then be the uh, the Nile. And Memphis, yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, Memphis, Tennessee is the. And I'll when we get off, I'll send you a picture I have of Memphis, Tennessee at the turn of this nineteen early nineteen hundreds, where there was a big sphinx that they moved that was in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, that would make. Okay. Wow. Hold on. Okay, New wait. Orleans, okay. Andrea. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I've heard this theory before, and I have actually done shows on uh, ancient Egyptian settlements in the Grand Canyon. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so there, they had Sphinx there in the Grand Canyon too. I mean, it's all hidden in plain sight. Absolutely. Everything is hidden in plain sight. All these Indian mounds, uh, there's way more to it. I have a friend, my friend Tracy. Okay. I met her, uh, my friend Tanya and Norma Jean. Uh, they do grid work. Okay, and uh, and Tracy, Tracy was uh, she's been mapping out ley lines all over the South. Okay, and all over all over the country, really. But she's been driving to all the different Indian mounds. 
lately. And, uh, and I met her and the ladies over at the Etowah India Mounds. And let me tell you, when I got out of my vehicle, I'd been there before. I think I'd been there before when I was a kid. But uh, when I got out of my vehicle, I heard the word and I felt giant. Giant. Yes. Okay. okay. That's what, yes. Yeah. Okay. So that is what I found. And it scared the shit out of me when I read it. So these, so basically for those who are not familiar, who are not from the United States, we were taught, or at least I was taught in a, as a child that the native Americans would basically pile their bodies together and build a mound. So Indian mounds are like a graveyard with a bunch of bodies. Well, what I learned is that's not true, that these are graves of giants. And some of these yeah. giants aren't dead. They're in stasis. Yeah. Could you imagine them popping up? <laughs> well, I think they are popping up. And that's what I'm, I'm actually going to be doing a show on that. Uh, we're, we're recording that this evening. Um, oh, and, uh, and so, yeah. Um, if anybody wants to go, y'all check out the Cryptid Huntress on YouTube. Uh, and I'm on Rumble too. But uh, there's a, we're doing a show on this. Um, I was given a blind remote viewing target. And it turned out to be that giant sighting. Uh, in Oregon from about two weeks ago, uh, there is a, a gentleman who was on, he was posting this all over TikTok. And uh, of course it's like TikTok. Okay. Well, people are putting legit sightings on TikTok. Okay. Um, from Bigfoot and giants to whatever UFOs and everything. Um, but I was given this target as a blind target to see, first of all, if it was real, if this guy's hoaxing or if he's being serious. Um, and I'm just going to say uh, between us, the show will already air by the time uh, you, you air this. Um, it's real. Uh, I do believe it's real. We do have giants. Um, I, I'm often given these uh, re blind remote viewing targets of giants. They, they live. I think that they're in inner earth. They're living in the mountains. Uh, there's all these bases and facilities that are all underground and in the mountains. And um, they're there. Uh, I don't know what they're waiting for. I don't know if they're going to come out, if they're ever going to come out. I, um, I do believe that our government is working with them. Yep. <laughs> okay. I, I have a friend who's a whistleblower. And um, allegedly, I'll just say the Rocky Mountains. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I love that word. I use it all the time. Me, Bill Gates. <laughs> no. um, I know three letter agencies. We're this is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a bunch of crazy Southern girls. What up? Crazy. <laughs> um, the Rocky mountains are, were actually created to house these. That's where they're housing a lot of these giants. And um, I have heard that they're planning on using them against us eventually training them to come yeah. which is kind of scary but i think the more and more people that become aware of it and i, I want to clarify this because i have a lot of people oh the nephilim the nephilim listen y'all i personally am of the belief that every living being has their own choices to make so just because somebody is a giant does not inherently make him or her bad it's you know there are probably very just because they're taller than us, you know, 25. And I actually, and I got my video on giants actually got zapped for this. So I can't say, even though this is all true and you can look it up. I, when I was, I'm trying to figure out how I can say this. When I was first researching the giants, I found a lawsuit between an archaeologist and a huge nonprofit science museum that starts with an S of course where they were sending their art of these fossils to this nonprofit science museum that starts with an s for them to house them and keep them thinking they were and help fund them to do this research because wait a minute if giants existed then we didn't come from monkeys like what happened like we don't know and um when they wanted to get their fossils back this organization had incinerated them and so well, they say they did. They say that well, they filed a lawsuit and the defense for this organization was they had to preserve the narrative. Oh, right. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's obvious. Oh, well, I actually had a, a, fe a fella uh, on my show who worked at the Smithsonian. Uh, he was an army veteran and uh, an, an anthropologist. And uh, his name, he calls himself Dr. Wu. That's not his real name. Uh, but he came on my show. Uh, I was on a show with him talking about time travel one day. And uh, this gentleman actually even built a time travel machine at one point. I believe it. And, uh, super I believe interesting. It. I mean, I might even be older than him. I don't even know how old he is. He's like my age or so, you know, 40s. Um, and uh, and so he he and I were, we got in the discussion of giants. He said that um, when he worked at the Smithsonian, he handled the giant skeletons and handled their bones. And he, he, he made me a he made an off-sided comment about them having holes in their skulls. Okay, well, that day he had told me that 
I, maybe I just assumed it, but I thought that it sounded like they had um, uh, bullet wounds. Yeah, that's what I was thinking heads. initially. When you yeah, said, yeah. Me too. Well, of course, when he came on my show, I brought him on. I was like, oh, this is like breaking, you know, huge information. We're going to, I'm going to break it. We're going to break it wide open, you know, because he didn't care. He, he doesn't work for this, the, that, well, I was about to say, he doesn't work for that museum anymore. And, um, yeah, those people. And, uh, and so when he came on the show, he kind of changed it up a little bit and was like, well, it could have been bull. It could have been bullet wounds or it could have been where they drilled a hole in their skulls. But all the skulls had a hole in them, all of them that they had there. So it kind of, uh, and it could be from, I think they call it lamp. It sounds like lamp lampening or something like that, uh, where they um, drill a, a hole in the skull. It's like an old school thing where, so it would relieve the pressure off your brain if you were sick or something. But I don't know. It sounds mighty suspicious to me. Very suspicious. You know what first comes yeah. to my head is that a lot of the, there's a lot, I'm actually doing a series of this with my friends in South Africa on Aquarius Rising Africa of all the famous people who have missing body parts now. And um, like Mata Hari, her head's missing. Uh, Henry IV, his head was missing until it was found in an attic in somebody's house in France. Um, we're going to talk about Oliver Cromwell, Charlie Chapman, like uh, Rasputin's wiener. Like there's just all these body parts. <laughs> that they think. Yeah. And so, and my boyfriend who grew up, he's 10 years older than me. So he's, he's or 11 years. He's 51. I'm aging myself by one year. He's 51. He grew up in the military, his father around, going all around the world. And that's what got him into spirituality. Cause he, like you had so many abduction experiences, saw weird stuff, um, started to really question things. And, um, and he said that he had found an article somewhere in the, his journey over all these years where the skull and bones club, now we know that the soul and the body are two different things. The body is the uh, is the avatar that the soul has experienced life, right? So the soul is what's eternal. The body, obviously, everybody. Not spoiler alert: we're going to die one day. Like spoiler alert, but the soul never dies. But however, when you're in your body, there's essences of your soul running through your DNA. And so when a when a person dies, what they do is they will take um, parts of their body, most likely their head, in a lot of cases their arm. And they mummify it. And then in ceremonies, in their rituals, they will burn it. So if it, they, they do the hand like this and they'll light the finger on fire and burn it like a candle. So it releases the essence of that person into the room so that they can breathe it in and take it in. And it's a, uh, it was wild because I was telling him, oh, my God, all these famous people have these, these missing body parts. It's quite common. It's not like one person. It's actually a problem. Where are they? Alexander the Great, where is his body? It's completely gone. It just disappeared, yeah. you know? And so, and so that's interesting that they had a hole in their skull because they, I feel like even if they were taking a particles of them, like their brain or something and using it for whatever devious deeds they were going to be doing, which for me, it's like everything comes down to consent. And if you didn't have their permission, then, you know, yeah. why are okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was actually assigned another blind remote viewing target of the giant of Kandahar. Okay. And, uh, and if you're familiar with that, that was from in Afghanistan. I can't remember the exact year that was, but, um, but I, my data was like picking up on, um, a, a, a specimen like uh, the army went in and they, they went to obtain a sample, like a specimen of a giant for cloning purposes. Okay, cloning. Free. So we have a we have a whole uh, issue with the cloning too. So if they're cloning giants, they knew those giants were there. Okay, according to my data, they went to go get one for um, probably nefarious purposes. But I mean, what if they've been cloning forever and oh, they were probably. taking little chunks of the of the skull to clone? You know, I taking a little piece for cloning purposes. So I so this leads me to a question about the Middle East and giants that I ran across. You know the story of Gilgamesh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Well, apparently, the Iranian war was because they had found him. And he oh. ain't dead. Oh, is that the one that's in stasis? Like, the in that stasis chamber? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've they, heard that, too. And I'm just like, I just, you know, that's what's so wild. And I, I said this, and I think this is why I think a lot of us are attracted to this folklore. You know, some people can, like, rub, uh, you know, brush it off as just myth and legend and fun fairy tales for kids. But I always believe that with every folklore and legend, there's truth, you know, and this is how people warn each other about about what's to come. Um, can, yeah. 
are the Giants. Now, I said this off camera to you because this has been the <laughs> freakiest thing to me. Feral people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have to I have to worry about feral people sometimes because I, I spend a lot of time out in the woods. And uh, and I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I, we do have to protect ourselves out there because there's mountain lions and all sorts of critters out there that could hurt us, bears and all sorts of stuff. And we're out there in the middle of the night roaming the woods, usually with no flashlight, okay, yeah. no headlamp or anything. Um, and so... It's just something. It's just something else to add to my list that I have to worry about. Uh, but yeah, there's feral people, feral children. I mean, that, they're I, they're pretty I, much everywhere. That yeah, in the Appalachians. And Apple, and that's what I was saying because we we are up in Appalachia. All, I've been going out that trails in Appalachia since I was a kid. So Forty years now. I've been I've been in and out of these mountains, and I've always said there the Appalachian mountains are very magical. But I think you know. That between you versus Appalachia, Appalachia's gonna win. And so you have, have to, every time. Every time. So you have to be very respectful of the nature. And sometimes uh near Lake Burton, that area, we go hiking in these trails that aren't used by many people, and we'll go off trail sometimes. And now after I learned about feral people, I was like, we're not going off trail anymore. That's not gonna happen. Well well that's that that area is actually rich with Bigfoots too, just so you know. And uh, yeah, we did yeah. we do the the Georgia Bigfoot Festival is in Clayton. Right there by Lake Burton every year. I've spoken at it. I think I spoke at it the past two years. Okay. When does so. that happen? Let my audience know because we have a lot of people on this channel that are would be very interested in this event. I believe it's usually in May. I think it's in May every year. Uh, that's when it was the past two years. So yeah, it's in May. We we have it at um we had it somewhere different last year, but yeah, I spoke at it. I don't know if I'll be speaking at it next year. Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe they'll ask I'll me back. I'll tell you, Jessica, <laughs> we're planning. A bunch of us are, at, you know, I, as I said, I spent a lot of time in India. I'm the only authorized teacher in this, female authorized teacher in the state of Georgia to teach Eastern philosophy. And so we run a, a shala of traditional Eastern yoga. That's another reason why I get called a witch too. <laughs> but, oh, nice. but it's fantastic. I'm like, thank you so much when they call me that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but um, we were talking about potentially doing a wellness retreat up in the Clayton area um, and, and have for like 10 days. We have a lot of viewers that are, are European or Australian and like giving a, a lot, a lot of significant time for them to come in and come in and really spend time in the Clayton area. It's a cool little town. It's, it's very beautiful, it's beautiful, a lot of money up there. It's very clean. Um, but I've been saying and saying that because we've been talking about the feral people, like, don't worry, guys. It's like, you're going to be on a retreat center. <laughs> you're not going to be out. The, <laughs> well, what, what, what Jessica does where she goes out into the great beyond by herself. <laughs> So. Yes. Well, I, I never go by myself. That's like one of my major rules is I always have somebody with me and I always let somebody know where I'm going Yeah, uh, because it is so dangerous. Even all the, all these grown men, we, not, none of us go alone, nobody. Uh, and I do have friends that, that, you know, they, they'll go big footing by themselves, but you know, they're, they're grown ups, and, but we don't advise that ever. No. Um, and it's, and it is partially because of the feral <laughs> potential for like feral people. I've seen the Hills have eyes. I know what's out there. I've never seen it. Somebody left a lot of comments oh. about that. I've never seen it. So now I like want to go see it. Did you see American oh. Horror Story season one, episode six called Feral? No, I did not. Okay. You got to go back and watch it because they cover this and the national parks and basically there and it's not giving anything away with the story, but basically they, they basically say feral people exist. That's why we have national parks because the government's trying to keep them under control so they don't eat us. Government's not trying to save us, guys. Like, oh, no. Oh, thing. you know, that's interesting. That's a little bit of soft disclosure, actually, uh, that they did that because uh, we we believe, I believe a lot of people on my teams, we believe that um, the national parks were designated as those national parks to protect the Sasquatch that are out there. And yeah. I do believe, yeah, it's, it's actually Sasquatch. It's not feral people. Okay. They put feral people in that movie, that show just because they could uh, maybe there are i don't i don't think that they're out there protecting the feral people i think it's sasquatch um well, i don't think they care about us us humans as much no, as they no, try to I make us think, think no yeah they feed us to them oh absolutely <laughs> yeah, they, absolutely they, they feed us we're, we're just food for some of those things out there absolutely and now does that, does that have to do with like the jersey do you think do you know anything about the jersey devil would that be considered like a sasquatch or in the same crypto family as as these entities totally different but it is a cryptid yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know exactly what the jersey devil is that was given to me as another blind remote viewing target that i looked into and uh and i did a show on it and it turns out there's a whole lot of different types of jersey devils there's yeah. not just one there's a whole bunch just like there's not just one bigfoot there's thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of bigfoot and all sorts of different types they're all regional 
They all look different. Uh, some of the Jersey Devils, what I was looking at when I was remote viewing this target, it looked like a goat man. Really? Um, so, yeah. And some people say that they look like a goat. They have wings. I had the one that I was looking at didn't have wings. But uh, not to say that they don't, you know, they're, they're just all different. That's what, when uh, I covered the Jersey Devil, I came to the conclusion that there was more than one. That it was, there's a, it bunch was of like them. a group of them. And, um, and I had people in the comment section from New Jersey actually telling their experiences, which is wild when you actually ha hear somebody giving their real life experience. And I, I want to say that I think the same is for your channel, Jessica. And I really hate to use the word safe space because I think it's been overused in our politically correct world. But I feel like that's the beauty of like what we do, what you do and I do is like we give people a place to come and like share their wildest stories where they, they're not going to be treated like they're crazy. They're not going to be treated like weirdos. I'm going to listen because I've had weird. I saw ghosts too, as a kid, you know, and that's what really started to me questioning. Um, uh, I went to Darlington, which we were talking about the lower school when I was a kid. Now the fire department said you can't have kids there anymore, but third, fourth and fifth grade was in that old plantation house, which was ransacked by Sherman and the family was brutally murdered. Um, and I, all of us, most people I know for, that I grew up with saw the girl swinging from the, from the balcony when she was hung <gasps> with a teenage girl by the Union soldiers. Um, we all, I think, were traumatized by seeing and being there in that house and the unhealed energy that was in that house. As children, children, of course, children are very susceptible to this stuff, you know, and they don't, they don't have, they actually sold the property, the school, and moved somewhere else, but for a while, they eventually said you can't have kids in here. It's it's a fire hazard, basically. But, you know, that's just, you feel that, don't you? That energy when you're here sometimes in the South. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and it is very traumatic to have a cryptid sighting or any yeah. kind of ghost uh, encounter. Um, and it is, I, I love being able to talk about my experiences because I know it, a, a lot of people resonate with it. Um, I like to say, okay, as, as traumatic as seeing a Bigfoot can be, or a dogman, or a werewolf, or an alien, or anything, as traumatic as it is, I always like to say that uh, a bit, I guess we're raising the consciousness of the planet, one Bigfoot sighting at a time, <laughs> okay? Love, love because, because what happens is it, it breaks people out of that little 3D matrix that they're living in, okay? And, it, and their whole world change and changes in that split second of them seeing that and seeing something that's not supposed to exist. You know, this is a monster. This is yeah. something I read about. This isn't supposed to be real. And, uh, and so their entire, the entire matrix just kind of breaks down at that yeah. point. Um, oh, absolutely. And isn't that a beautiful thing too, because you do get, when you get stuck in the matrix, it, it, it just becomes so monotonous. And then when you realize there's so many mysteries, I mean, have you studied the doggone people of Africa? Have you ever? Oh, seen yes. Yes, absolutely. Because I was, uh, okay, so another remote viewing target I did, it was uh, the Nomo, uh, the, the Nomo, I believe they're like some kind of aquatic, it's almost like a mermaid or something. They're yeah, aquatic yeah. extraterrestrials. And they had a connection to the Dogon tribe. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh yeah. I did a whole show on that. The mermaids, <laughs> are mermaids still here on our, our planet? Or are they gone? Totally. I think everything's here. It's somewhere. Yeah. They're, they're, they're here somewhere. Yeah. Well, that's um, a the the Black Sea, which is right by um, Ukraine, which I'll, I'll just say that once because of, but uh, people were wondering if they weren't doing some shenanigans over there to try to distract from disclosure of of um, the reality of of what we're living with. On, I mean, they just found. Did you see the the articles like a year ago? They found um, a yellow brick road under the Pacific Ocean. No, a literal yellow what? brick road. It's near Hawaii. That's amazing. It's oh like gosh. deep in the Pacific, and they found it. And these kids are kids. I guess they're like graduate school kind of kids. They're in there. They're doing their explore. To, they're exploring the ocean. And they find they. See, it's a literal road. So that goes to say that that the water wasn't there at one point. There was no water there at one point. Like, wow. what the hell is going on? You know. Um. What about Antarctica? Have you remote viewed Antarctica? You know, it's. Oh man, I have been given targets of Antarctica as well, including the Black Pyramid in yes. in Antarctica. Yes. Okay, so that's a that's a big one. I did a show. Uh, my friend um, Tanya, she also remote viewed that as well. And so she and I and the the person who tasked us with the target was Barry Littleton, my one of my good friends, uh, and and we did a show on that. I believe it had a whole lot of. Okay, first of all, it does exist. Okay, it is there. Uh, we were picking up that it has, um, it's like a pyramid on the outside made of, it had, was covered in obsidian. Okay. Oh, wow. Uh, some kind of black, that's, that's what makes it black. 
And then it also had a pyramid, the same exact size, pointing down into the ground as well. So it's like as above, so below. And it was some sort of like a power generator and it was powering whatever's going on underground and stuff. But it was very ancient, like millions of years old. I Interesting have, stuff. Yeah. When I was in my last trip to India, there was a girl, an American white girl that I ran into at a cafe. And of course, when you're in India and you see a white girl, you're going to just start talking to her because <laughs> that's, you know, connect, you're, you're a minority there, right? And she was on break from doing scientific research in um, Antarctica. And there was something, I can't even remember her name. I only had like one encounter, but there was something very strange about her. And I kept, I could not put my finger on it. Are people in a, studying, in, like, are they seeing things that they didn't expect to see when they showed up? They just thought they're going to see a few penguins, <laughs> you know, but. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. There's like underground cities there yeah. and bases and like an entrance to inner earth and. Who okay. knows what all's That's down there? The thing. Agartha. So does Agartha exist? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Absolutely. Why not? Why wouldn't it exist? Um, General Bird documented it, right? That was that was my that was when I was researching Agartha. That was the most convincing thing to me was his diary entries and the things that he said about the both the poles. And I guess Agartha. So my next question, just get your thoughts on, and I could go either way. To me, it doesn't really matter to me because whatever the answer where we're living on it anyway, Agartha can live with a round earth or a flat earth. Uh, you know, it can be both. So what do you think? Do you, because the flat earth stuff is coming up big time. Do you think the earth is flat, round, or somewhere in between? Oh my gosh, I hate answering this. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty solid in saying that it's round. Okay, I believe round. Uh, but it is very suspect. It's, it's sus that the UN has a flat earth map on their flag and all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't know. Like I mean, that. I just, I, I think we probably live in a computer generated, you know, reality. I don't even know. I mean, anything that I thought I knew is like out the window. Out the window. Yeah, I go back and forth myself too about whether it's flat. I, I, in my opinion, I'm like, it's probably somewhere in between. And I don't even know what that means, guys. I don't even know what that means when I say it's somewhere in between. Do you think we have more land that we're not aware of? On the oh, Earth? I'm sure. I mean, I, who's to even say that our maps are correct? Do you right. know what I mean? Uh, the maps seem to change. And then we got this little thing called the Mandela effect. Yes. And timeline yes. changes and timeline splits and all this other weird stuff with like CERN and all these hydron colliders and stuff. I mean, yes. it, it it's like it, our reality changes like every day, <laughs> it seems yes. like. so. For the people yeah. who don't know what the Mandela effect is, do you want to explain that quickly so people can re recognize it? Yeah, the Mandela effect is us having, well, some people call it false memories. I totally don't agree with that. Um, it's almost like you remember something one way, but today it's not that same way. And it never was that way. Okay. Like, for instance, we have, um, okay, like the Ford logo, like Ford trucks. Okay. Uh, I come from a Ford family. My grandfather and my dad, they owned a Ford dealership. Okay. I, I used to race cars. Okay. You know very that much logo, into, girl. You know that I logo. know that logo, y'all. Okay. Um, and it has like a, and it just had a, the, on the, on the F, the F O R D, the, the Ford, the F had just a little curvy line through it. That's yeah. That's now, how I it too. Today, it has a curly cue on that little wavy line. Okay. And it looks weird. And, uh, and, and I, I, that's a Mandela effect. It's something that we've never, it was never there before. I don't remember it that way. Um, I sent it to my dad and I was like, dad, does this have a curly cue on it? And he goes, no. I said, well, go check the garage. And he went in his garage and all the trucks had curly cues in the F. And he, it freaked him out. And then, but then he's the kind of guy who's like, well, I guess it was that way. And I'm just getting old. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my memory well, doesn't serve me. People would be like, it's, it has to be me. That's wrong. Yes. Right? Well, okay. But, but to me, I believe that it's just, we've changed timelines. That's okay. Neat. Yes. Because when you go back and, and you go back in history and like, with, even with like King Tut's head, like his hat, he used to just have a Cobra on the front. Now he has a Cobra and a vulture. Okay. And, uh, and that's the Mandela effect. It's like, I don't remember there ever being a vulture, but if you go back into history books, even history books in your grandparents bookshelf that have never been touched, he's going to have a vulture and a cobra in his hat now, because that's the way it's always been in this timeline that we're in right now. Uh, here's, here's another one. If, let me do one last one. I got to say this because we're in the South. Chick-fil-A. Yes. I was about to say, that's one of them too. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's like the that's like the bane of my existence. I'm like, why did they that is that, that they changed the name? I woke up one day and it was C H I C K fillet. What do you remember it being? I can't remember this the specific, but if you show me, I would remember it being the first one without it was out the H or it something. Was, or? It was C H I K fillet. Yes, that's, that's how I remember it. That's it. it. Yeah. So I'm a vegetarian, so I don't go. But I but we have <laughs> you don't eat chick fil A. And I remember when I first actually I love their um lemonade frosties so mm. <laughs> but oh, yeah. i remember I, I when they showed when they were i was looking at all like the bear steam bears the bear and stein bears it was bear and steen when i was a kid now it's bear and stein and so what's crazy about the mandela fett guys is that it's not just one or two people who remember it differently it's massive groups of people who have the same memory that is not accurate now and i, I agree with you jessica i think it's timeline change um they call it the mandela fett because of um mandela he, many people believe that him being dying in prison, but then he came out and became president. That's right. I remember him dying in prison. Same. Actually. Uh, yeah. So it's, and then, you know, so, so it's not one of those things where you can like feel crazy because people that you don't even know across the planet have the same memory you do. Did you see that clip? It might've been a TikTok. I'll have to go back and look with the bear. Did, did you have the Berenstein bears growing up? Those books? Yes. Yes, I saw that. I was, yeah, Berenstein. Yeah, they're the bear. I don't know. It, it would, it's definitely changed. Uh, the spelling changed. And I saw that video where it's like the guy goes in one room and yes, it changes that's it. and the other. And it changes. I, I was, it could be CGI, but I don't know. I just don't know. And, well, and there's also a clip of like uh, somebody holding up an old like Nokia phone, I guess, over like the TV. And like Richard Simmons has a headband in where he's he's always had a headband when you put the phone over the tv screen uh and you can see through the screen on the phone he's got a headband but when you take it off he doesn't have a headband anymore no sweatbands that's so, and that and no. there's some really funny like instagram pages i follow of kids that grew up at like we're the last let's just face it we're the last great generation that we didn't have we were free we were free range kids and then right. somebody was getting making fun of everybody for dressing up as richard simmons with the headband because he never had a headband but you're right. Like, I remember him with the sweatband. How do all these people remember the same thing and it not be so? I know. And Britney Spears in that plaid skirt, you know, it went to a black skirt now and it's long, like a long black skirt. It's so weird. Yeah. Speaking of Britney Spears, she's come back up again. I wasn't going to ask you this. What do you think has happened to her? What do you think happened to her in 2008? Do you think she's a product of the system? Do you think that she's a clone herself? Do you think that what do you think happened to her? I think that's a clone. I'm not, I, I'll just put it out there. I think she's probably a clone. I mean, there's just too much celebrity cloning going on. And, uh, and, it, and also, like, all those pictures from, like, the 1800s and beyond and, and, and throughout history of these people that look exactly like our celebrities today. Yeah. Um, including Taylor Swift. Okay. Yeah. All right. What was that? Like, Zena? What, what was that? I was name? about Anton to say. Daughter. I, I presented Anton LaVey. I did a big research on another person's channel, not on mine. And I talked about the Taylor Swift. And um, and now my mind's gone blank. The woman, um, she's no longer alive. She was like Marilyn Monroe's replacement back in the day. Her daughter is the actress on Law and & Order. And she this woman was a huge Satanist with Anton LaVey. And she died in a car crash. Um, Jane, Mans Jane Mansfield. That's it. And her, She's buried in Carrollton, isn't she? Oh, I didn't know. Girl. Out here or like near that. Rome? Yeah. Like over in this area. Yeah. Yeah. She's from here. From She's I from West Georgia. Not, not far from a Haley Lancaster. <laughs> it's like six well, degrees of separation. <laughs> no, it's wild. Well, it's what's crazy is so Taylor Swift looks identical to Anton LaVey's daughter. Identical. Yes. Like, it's her. It's got to be. It's crazy. Like, it's not it's some, oh, yeah, that could be your daughter. No, like identical. And then that Bad Blood video of, of her song Bad Blood, she had Jane Mansfield's daughter. I can't remember her name. She's an actress. She's in Law and Order, was in the video with her. Is it Mariska Hargitay that's it. or something? Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's it. And then just like, said her name right. <laughs> too many like weird things going on. And then somebody aired a video from 1980. I was born in 1983. I believe they saw what Taylor Swift was born in, like 1989 or something. There was a, a commercial. It was toy, a toy commercial from like 1980. And the girl playing with the toy looked just like Taylor Swift. 
fucking mm. weird. Like it is just it is weird. I think I think this is getting out of hand for the controllers. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, now, you know, I think they've always done this, but now we're seeing it. Yeah. The veil has lifted, and we're able to, to see what they're doing. We're awake to it now. Is that They've always done this. Yeah, we did yeah. not. Have, and I think, I do believe the internet was created to be a, a control mechanism, but as I said before we were recording, and my audience knows this as well, the darkness can't create anything, only the light can. The only thing the darkness can do is take from the light and invert it. So everything, what's that good old Johnny Cash song? What's done in the dark will be brought to the light. And I think that it's back. The, the internet is, is trying, because information travels so quickly now, it's almost like, you know, what are they, I mean, and what do you, and I, not politically speaking, because I don't want to get into politics, but do you think, we know that President B, I'll say President B, that's not the original man, is it? His ears. Oh, God. Are He's got there's like five or six of this person. Different yeah, I call her every time. Have you ever the earlobes? Yeah, everything. I mean, it's it's all a big stage. Like, I mean, the world is literally a stage, and yep. uh, I mean, nothing is what is put in front of us. And so you just have to have. I mean, you know, eyes to see. And when I say eyes to see, have that third eye wide open. Mine's wide open, and I know oh, yours totally. is too. Yeah, and uh, you know. They keep us um, kind of lulled to sleep, or they have not not me, but no. uh, in the past I can't see. In the past, I wasn't asleep; I was. Um, but they keep the you know the fluoride in the water and um, us eating processed foods and all this stuff to to keep our uh, pineal gland shut and calcified and stuff. So we're not able to tune in and uh, you know see what's really going on. I mean, it's so obvious once you're awake. It's so it's like that movie They Live. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like I've got my goggles on now. I can see everything. I see everybody. <laughs> my favorite is once you see it, you can't unsee it. Like it's that one of those moments. Like once you realize, you can't unrealize. You can't you can't un undo it. And it's um oh girl, I could talk to you about so much. I I feel like you know Atlanta where I live, which is the capital of Georgia. It's also the biggest city in Georgia. They ch it used to be called Elizabeth well, Elizabeth Town. It was a it was a railroad depot, and where does Atlanta come from? It comes from the Atlantic Ocean. They say, well, where does that come from? Atlantis. You know, like, there's so many, you start to see, all, and I went back and rewatched the 1996 Olympic opening ceremonies. I have a friend who comes on this channel. Her name is Jamie Soleil. She is a gold medalist uh, figure skater from Canada, and she's awake too at this point. And so she would come on my channel, and she, because she was at the Olympics, you know, this... You know, we, we would go, we were going back and talking about these opening ceremonies. If you go back and watch the 1996 openings, it's on YouTube. There's some weird ass shit before they get into like the tap dancing cloggers. Of course they had cloggers. Um, of course. Of course they're, they're in did. Georgia. They know, right? Like that's great. But in the beginning, there's some weird <laughs> stuff they're doing. And you're like, and I think back then people are like, oh, it's just artists. They're just being artists. I'm like, no, this, they were, oh. this, something was happening. They pick specific locations for a reason. They're harnessing something. All those people. Rituals. Yes. Yeah. It's a ritual. They're harnessing all of our energy. The louche. Okay. Yes. Like they do them these huge, gigantic, like coliseums and stuff. And uh, I mean, they also had the bombing. Do you remember that? Yeah. The Olympic yep. bombing. I mean, I'm well, from here too. You know? A mile yeah. away from me. Yeah. It's the Olympic Park. It's, it's like right down the street. We, we go to that Waffle House sometimes because we still oh, yeah. like the Waffle House. It's Centennial. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. I used to work right downtown. So yeah, I know. It's, I know all about that place. It's why, I mean, if you guys just, where, whatever city you live in, just start looking. I mean, when I was covering Tartaria, I had gone up to Washington DC that summer because Washington DC is a total Tartarian town. People in, uh, those, those guys in like carts and buggies did not build that. Like that, that's no way. Like no oh, way gosh, they did not no. build that without electric tools. Like it's just common sense, no. right? We just accepted that that's what happened. But when you start to like break it down and go, wait a minute, that's not possible. Like that's not, they, they, we can't replicate that today and we have tools to do so. Like what? You know, well, you start noticing all of the, the architecture too. It's to harness all the free energy. A lot of yeah. these like cathedrals and stuff. Yes. And, and well, we don't have a whole lot of that left here in the South actually, because the civil war came through, right? And they burned Atlanta to the ground. Okay, they burned, they destroyed a lot of the cities all over the United States. They brought in the orphan trains. Are you familiar with the orphan oh, trains? Oh, I, co I cover. Okay, 
Yeah, her incubator baby. With all these, yeah. all these kids like came out of nowhere. Uh, and of course, you know, up in North Georgia, we got the Babyland General with the Cabbage Patch Kids. I mean, those are based off the Cabbage Patch Kids of, you know, the early 1800s, 1900s of those postcards. I'm sure you've seen that too. Yeah. Okay. I actually, uh, with all these yeah. like pod people and I think they're clones. They've been cloning for a long time. That's what I think. I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist. We are too um, on this channel. I'm a realist. A re I'm, I'm just a realist. realist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I will say, so my friend Shanti on Aquarius Rising Africa, she is inter she interviews a lot of whistleblowers and there's a guy named Caleb. He doesn't show his face and I don't know the full story. Um, he worked as a high magician. If I, I hope, I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right, Caleb or Shanti. And he talks a lot about the Cabbage Patch Kids. I'm, I'll send you some of those videos, and I can, because he knows. And I told Shanti, I, because we're near the Cabbage Patch, um, us in Georgia. And I told Angie, and if you want to come, Jessica, I'm gonna check it out. And I was, I was like, we'll go live with you. I'll put it on my phone, and we'll go live with you in the fa in the factory, so you can see. I was never a Cabbage Patch girl. I was more my Barbies. But I did <laughs> one of my favorite stories to this day, Jessica. And if you get into, um these children where they came from in the Victorian age, like not, they, they tell us the story that women were just having unwanted pregnancies. So they were giving the kids, yeah. but there's way that mean like every woman would have to have like five unwanted kids, you know, for this, for the amount of children right. to be available. The, the newsy strike of 1899, which turned into the children's strike of 19, 1899 shut down all of New York city. And that's where the, the movie and the play newsies comes from. I dived, I did a deep dive into that story because where did all these kids come from? It's one of the fit my favorite stories I've covered so far. They didn't have parents. They they are a bunch of you know the the play and the movie. They're like they're seen as like teenagers, but in reality, they were like eight or nine year old kids that were high on cocaine. They were buying cocaine from the pharmacy, doing lines, smoking cigars, puppy piling on the streets of New York City, sleeping together like to keep warm, hawking newspapers, and then it moved into like the slaughterhouses. The all these children in the workforce that don't have parents. Yeah. At all. Very sus, right? Super sus. Super, um, yeah. It's super wild. sus. It's really wild. And, uh, and you know, and we were taught, like, like you said, like we were just taught to just kind of accept it. And uh, it was during the depression. So, um, so, you know, like parents couldn't afford their children is what we're told. Yeah. They couldn't afford them. So, but I mean, that that's a lot of kids. I mean, to me, it just sounds like it was replacement. Like all these, these gigantic, I mean, these buildings, think about like the insane asylums, all the buildings that were like castles and stuff that they turned in to asylums and hospitals and prisons and schools and stuff. Uh, it's just odd. I just don't think that our, our history is what we've been told. No. And, uh, and I think it was just another human reset. Yeah, what that it goes was. back to the mud floods that they flooded us out and yeah. what's left and they recreated um, and, and, and that reset happened. And it's it's wild. I mean, God, I know we're coming up over an hour, Jessica, and you've got a live tonight, but there is so much. Will you come back? Can we? Oh, of course. I would love to. We, I mean, we could talk all day. Seriously. I know. I, I feel like, y'all, this is the South, y'all. Come visit us. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, for this, sure. This, And I will tell you, Jessica, I noticed the other day, because I, I film with people from all over the world. And I, I've been doing consistently with people for like a couple of years now, a couple of times a week. And I noticed the other day, one of my friends from another country, we were off camera talking and she said, y'all. And I looked and she goes, oh my God. <laughs> I haven't been filming with you for too long. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I say y'all all day, all day, all every day. day, all day long. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much to crack into guys once again. So you do lives on Thursday nights, correct? Like every Thursday. I do. Live. I do lives. I, I have four, four lives a week, uh, usually. And I, I have a live cool. every Wednesday, Wednesday at 1 PM Eastern on my channel, the cryptid huntress. And then I do a live Thursdays at 8 PM Eastern, um, on Thursdays, uh, on my channel. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I'm actually a weekend host at spaced out radio. So I have live shows there every, uh, Saturday and Sunday night at 10 PM Eastern. Uh, oh, you can wow. find me there and it's, it's all on cryptids and just weird stuff. Usually at spaced out radio, it's mostly cryptids that I talk about, but, um, yeah, I'm the, I'm the Bigfoot lady over there. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to put your link uh, in the description box below again. So you guys, please go over and subscribe. I enjoy. One thing I will say too about you, Jessica, I was trying, like growing up, we had Mrs. Cunningham. She was our local storyteller. And she was like at everybody's birthday party. 
And that, that, that gift of storytelling, like the way your voice, as I told this to my boyfriend, I was like, she reminds me so much of that, like Southern cultural where every town's got a storyteller that, that com- has the ability, the way that you enunciate. I'm like, that's, she just reminds me so much of Miss Cunningham. Miss Cunningham was like the hot ticket in town. Like you, you, you did not have a good birthday if she wasn't there telling stories. Right. Oh so, so and what that's a compliment. It's yeah, that's so sweet. It's one that's Southern, that's that Southern culture, you know, that we, oh. that we in the South, um, I feel like there's so much about, you know, cultures that are kind of dying nowadays but i i hope that 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 es- that eccentric you know everybody's got grandmama's got tarot cards even though they go to church on sunday they got tarot cards somewhere in that house you know like i just hope that never dies like i because it's it just shows you how unique we are as human beings and how um interesting we are as people and you know in the south we've got the the protestantism predominantly and then we've got you know and then we've got the native american cultures with the the african gullah voodoo cultures you know there's just such a combination and we've all survived together and it's morphed into this one really beautiful um common culture and um and across the board you better say yes ma'am and no sir or you'll get smacked in the back of the head as a kid <laughs> That's right. That's right. Bless your heart. Bless yeah, your heart. That's right. You don't say Bless yes. Your heart. Heart. Bless your little heart. Thumped yeah. on the head. So yeah. I'll get a whooping. But a whooping. Get a whooping. Every culture. That's right. Go so pick a switch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, some of my friends I've been with from like the north, they're like, why do you keep saying yes, ma'am? I'm like, listen, that's a sign of respect in the south. So, you know. It is. <laughs> um, it so. is. I still say it. I say I it every do. day, all the time. I do too. I, I do. I do. Yes, ma'am. Too. I, I will say right before we close out, I was at Publix grocery store a few months back and this little 14 ish year old kid was bagging my groceries for me and he called me ma'am and I about died. Oh, I well, mean, somebody's raising him right. That's good. Yeah. I mean, he could have been my son, but you know, I was like, yeah, his, his parents are Southern. They're like, you say yes, ma'am. You say no, sir. You know, so Jessica, I am so you guys, any questions you have for Jessica, leave them in the comment section below. When we get off, Jessica, when we stop recording, I'm going to give you the name of the werewolf of Georgia because I would love to bring you back on to get your perspective because this is one of the most fascinating cases for me on this show. Oh, we- yes. So I would love to do that. That would be so fun. Yes. I, I'll do. bring Angie on too, okay. y'all. Miss Angie. Uh, okay. Angie will send you some pickles, girl. Um, so. Okay. Oh, my God. I would love that. Okay. Thank so, you. <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, we hope you guys all have a wonderful – We're this is going to be airing on Friday morning. We're, we're recording it Thursday night. But I hope you guys have a wonderful and safe weekend. We've got Thanksgiving coming up in a couple of weeks. Be safe, guys. Keep your eyes open and just keep loving each other. And as Ram Dass says, we're all just walking each other home, wherever the hell that is. So, so <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody.